Hi, I am Arash Golnam, and you're listening to God Talks, double G U double T. Hi, I'm Maria. Thank you for listening, and make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And don't forget to watch the full episode. Thanks again for listening to God Talks. I was doing before. I see it as a meaningful continuation. I'm just going to stop here. 21 years enrolled on university. You, you need to have a statue there soon. <laughs> the longest ever. <laughs> to consider that one. Still going, still going on. Yeah. So um, let me ask you this. Do you, because we're talking about um, that, I think it fits in quite well. Do you, what do you think of, um, what do you think, but also what's your attitude about uh, gut feelings, assumptions, instincts? Well, very interesting. Yeah. Um, so in, in psychoanalysis, we call gut feelings intuitions, basically. Um, so if you look at four different functions that we have that are available to our psyche, we have thinking, we have sensation, we have feeling, and we have intuition. So intuition is one of the four, basically. Two of these functions help us gather data or information, which is through our senses. We can read something, see something, smell it, touch it, some evidence about it, right? Or you can gather information about things through your intuition. Intuition is knowing about something without knowing how you do, basically. So it's somehow in contact with something that is mystical. So you, you enter a mystical realm when you talk about intuition, basically. Then once we gather information, we can use our thinking or our value system, our feelings, to basically judge it, appraise it, assess it. And um, I would say right now, where we are in the world, in, in terms of educational system that we have, in terms of the way, what is being valued in businesses and companies is more biased towards sensation and thinking. We have somehow um, neglected the or ignored the feeling side and the intuition side, which is which is essential for human beings. For me, anything that is um, basically um, can be can be expressed in terms of a formula or in terms of um, let's say an algorithm, there is no feeling or intuition in it. So all the jobs that will be somehow done by the algorithms or AI as people would talk about it, are the type of things that are dealing with different types of thinking and different types of sensation, which is measurements, evidence gathering, and so on and so forth. Anything which is feeling-based, intuition-based, will stay exclusively as something which is human, right? This is what I think. But at the same time, what we try to develop is more on the thinking side and on the sensation side. So we are somehow putting ourselves in a, in, a, in a competition with the machines in areas in which at some point, or if not already, they will excel, right? And they will win over us, they will overtake us right now. So for me, intuitions are the purest form of insight you can have. When, when you receive an intuitive insight, it means it's not through your thought process. It's not through overanalyzing, overthinking stuff, right? Somehow something comes to you, right? And speaks to you at a level that influences not only your mind, but also your body. You know, our body, our body responds to intuitive insights faster than our brain. So the intelligence we have, which is not intellectual necessarily is the entity within us that somehow acknowledges, right, and values intuition. So it's some sort of an intelligence which is not intellectual. We have to, we have to make this differentiation between intellect and intelligence. They're not synonyms. In, intellect is one form of basically intelligence. There are other forms of intelligence. 
I would say the highest form of intelligence we can possibly imagine is intuition. So this is my take on intuition. My, in, my intuitive side is my guide, basically. In my, and you know, the moment I came to contact with this, um, let's say, way, the, the opening or the gateway to the inner world, I, something deep inside me was convinced that I need to pursue this. I didn't need to sit down at a desk and do cost benefit analysis do calculations to see how much it's going to cost me over years to do this study, how much of uh, deviation will happen. I just knew I had to do it. And that was it. So in a fraction of a second, my I, I had a decision without even going through a decision-making process, right? Bang, it was clear to me. And whenever I have followed this, let's say, um, intuitive insights, which are different from instinct, I would say intuitions are much more refined ways of connecting to the, let's say, our deeper self than instincts, because instincts are more at the impulse level, right? The instinct that we have, for instance, the, the fight or flight type of stuff, you know, the instinct to, uh, for instance, eat, to procreate. These are some sort of in instinctual things that we have in common also with basically with um, animals as well. They also are instinctive, purely instinctive. So intuition, uh, there's this sentence that um, I don't remember where from, I, I, I read that the spider that creates the beautiful and intricate web, you know, it's, it's really interesting how it's built. And a human architect who generates something or an artist who generates an artifact, there's a difference between them. Humans can imagine the end result before building it. So we have this imagination. There is some sort of a meaning of what we are doing for us that brings about this imagination. But the spider does not do that. It just builds it out of instinct, right? So the baby spider comes and then can start doing the exact same thing. It's in embedded inside them as an instinctive way of responding to life. But for us, intuition is of a higher level. It deals with not only reflexes and impulses, but also meaning. It seeks some, some sort of a higher meaning. Another example is eating, as I said, is an instinct, right? You can deal with, the, with, the, with eating at an instinctual level, just eating, right? You can take it to a higher level, make it a, some sort of a community of people gathering together, have some opportunity for bonding, a dinner or breaking bread, which creates a bond, a powerful and important bond amongst people, right? It takes, the, the instinctual part is probably still there, but there's a culture that is added to it. It's nature plus culture. And then there is a whole new level of that, which is very spiritual, which is fasting. By stopping to eat the outer world food, you nourish your soul with the inner world food. So that is more like some sort of a, if someone is convinced that they have to fast, this doesn't come out of an instinctual urge because the instinct drives us towards eating. But the intuition or connection to those higher spiritual ways of making sense of the world, they may push us towards fasting, which is basically not eating, but at the same time nourishing our soul. Cool. I don't know how we're going to do this, not to speak for the next 24 hours of this podcast. So I will try so hard to limit that one to, to some of the, I'm going to call essentials, which is really like random essential. Otherwise, we will never finish. Uh, so um, in that sense, because uh, your brain is going into so many different directions and I'm just trying to, to highlight, okay, what I want us to focus now, because you're saying Good the way you're that. presenting everything is no, no, the way you're presenting it, actually, that's the longest answer I had for this question about, you know, gut feelings and so on. But one thing is I started this podcast besides the fact that there was the pandemic and I wanted to reconnect with people I met initially. Um, and because I had a really, really bad kind of customer experience, that was the push. But the initial reason was um, 
it's like, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to start a podcast. It just came like that. And I, I named my business Gut as well with a double G, U, double T. <laughs> okay, because I believe that when I started, I'm not going to say following completely my gut, but actually doing it um, and not just ignoring it and not wanting to kind of see what's happening or, or what I'm feeling or sensing. Um, things changed for me in that sense. I, I could feel the, the difference in, in my life, even in, in basic things. 